Alright, here we are at Plymouth Station. There used to be buildings here. You couldn't see the bay. Some Miles Standish marker at Duxbury. Bunch of boats. Used to be building all along there. Other one over there, they still left the smokestack. See the dunes further out there. We'll see that further down. One old building left, there's another. Uh, we got this one. This building was all torn. We are at the beginning of Plymouth Center. You can see the banner across the street, the church down there, the side off to the right. And if you'll notice, they're running the same system uh, that they ran in soccer. Why they want to treat me like I'm some kind of an amateur who hasn't been through it before, I couldn't tell you. They're really pretty dumb about it. Uh, here we are in Plymouth Harbor. This is the pier. See the red pickup truck? They're around. All in strategic spots to show everybody who's boss. Oh, there's the little pirate ship. Maybe fit a half a person in that. That's the pier where the Mayflower usually parks, but the Mayflower is not even want under repair. There's a flag. This is main drag down by the beach. Look over there, you'll see uh, a building that's a tourist shop. It's a replica of uh, an idealized uh, log cabin. And up on the hill is a statue of what they say is Massasoit, who was the official chief down here. The real chief was Squano. Squano was one of my ancestors. I moved along the shoreline about 100 yards south. There's the pirate ship, Captain John's. Jetty, slow tide. A couple of boats, a couple of ducks flew around. They're still there. See stuff. In the we got the sidewalk goes down to that log cabin tourist thing. Here's the main room. Another hundred yards down, you see a laughing gull there on the lower left. It's a jetty. There's a big spit across the way. There's a beach there you can go to, I guess. But on the other side of the harbor, Duxbury Beach. There's the pier again. Now you can start to see the uh, the hill in the distance. That's I think they call that Indian Point. Yeah, there was a nuclear power plant out there. I don't know if it's still allegedly there. The Plymouth one, the one they always had some trouble with. And there's that. I guess that's a log cabin, but it doesn't look like it anymore. It's a different color. And you can see kind of the kitschy touristy stuff on the main drag. These are old New England type houses on the street. Filled with stuff like that. Back of the beach again, another 100 yards or so. And there's the boats. There's the monument to Miles Standish at the top of the hill. There's the dune or whatever it is, the spit in the back. There's the pier. Then we're over by the cabin, the first one. See the harbor, the same stuff. Here's the pier where the Mayflower was. I might add it at some point. Just to show you what it's supposed to look like. You can look it up online. It's just an old wooden ship replica. There's that Indian Point. It's an interesting place. Here's another tourist cabin thing. Actually, I think the other one's the bathroom. And of course, there's the rock in, inside that, uh, uh, I guess that's probably, it's either marble or granite. Inside that, that structure, it's down below in the water. And of course, we have another diggy project in front of that, and the Indians up on the hill. There's Indian Point, it's pretty. Some beaches further south of here. My family used to uh, rent cottages about seven miles south of here. I've been out here a few times since 2009. The ships. Are there. There's a shoreline, houses on the hill. Some old New England sea captain houses. One has a widow's walk up top. Beautiful orange. 
your stuff, diggy construction. Founders Museum's on the hill and the Indians up there, you can see them. Somewhere up there, there he is. Somewhere up there. We're gonna go up there. And this is Plymouth Rock, that's where it is, it's in this building. Plymouth Rock, the Pukazooka today is absolute stupidity right in front of the Indian. Seems like old times. Here's the Indian, it's allegedly Massasoit. Massasoit was a lot fatter than this. But, that's Massasoit and what would I know. Here's the harbor from the hill, the rock was in there. And so forth. All the diggy stuff, diggy, diggy all the time right in front of the Indian and the Indian statue. Seems like old times, except for these guys aren't official. Just so that I can be in the picture, there I am. There's the diggy morons. There's Plymouth Harbor. Yada yada. A lot of ruin a nice town. Stop! Stop the car. Take the window and come 53, giving lectures, um, prove that they live here. There's a church behind it's the cemetery. We're going up there at the top of the hill. It's the nicest view in town and a couple of historical markers. There's a cemetery on a hill. There's the hill, we just climbed it. Some more of the hill and the cemetery. We'll walk around it now. And look what old treasures. We find at the top of the hill. I'm sure, it'll get more interesting. It's the only new looking thing around. Best real estate in town. See how they do with it? Now we need to have the fire engine. You can hear that behind me. Oh, there's Mr. Edward Gray. As long as it's not Dorian, I'm happy. And now you can see the ocean. Right, here we are at the top of the hill. Some gravestones. Positive. Oh, a mile inland, I'm sure there's no construction. Positive. This is all Pukazuka. Potemkin village stuff. No idea I didn't come to the, this part of the cemetery before. Others can look at it. Nicest like view in towns from the top of the hill of a cemetery. All the gravestones in the way. Beautiful homes. I'm sure they're filled with people. There's the harbor. There's the ocean beyond. There's Indian Point. Church, yada yada. Some of these markers obviously have been redone if you read them easier. I haven't seen any of the famous ones. There are a couple of them up here I saw last time. Could have disappeared. I just saw the Bradford clan but without uh, the former governor of the colony, if that's what you want to call them. I don't feel like going back. They weren't particularly interesting people anyway. Not the way I think about it. Bunch of other markers. And the bay in the back, you can see it. I'm here at the park by the water. I'm gonna give you a 360. That's the parking lot. There's the monument to Miles Standish. It's low tide, as you can see. This place is prettier at high tide. It will be in the morning. I just don't know if it's not gonna be raining. If it isn't, I'll come down again and Take another look at this. It's Indian Point. It's uh, Plymouth Harbor down there, which is there. Where the rock is and the ship isn't this year. Condos, kitty stuff. Yada, yada, yada. It's showtime. Oh, beautiful. Must be time for some gas. Idiot. Well, here I am, folks. I'm at the beach again. As you can see, I have company. Bumper sticker on the back there that says something about there's no place like home plate at Fenway Park and I'm thinking he's a gasser and he has absolutely no idea what we were doing at Fenway a month and a half ago. I think that's kind of ironic. You think I should go talk to him? We already had a pretend cop come by to make sure I didn't arrest him or have him arrested in my face or something. I'm getting really tired of this. This of course won't get up. April 25th, 
this is Plymouth Harbor. Those are Brant geese. There's a little flock of them, probably about 40 of them, hanging around here. And, and the background's Indian Point. That's further south on the way to Manomet. And here's the harbor. Hang on, I'll turn it around. It's now high tide, which is a lot pretty. Have an onshore breeze. About uh, 12 knots right now. There's those brants. See the sand dunes spit there in the back, I was called up to something or other beach, long beach or something. There's the Indian Point. There's where the Mayflower is supposed to be, but isn't. That's downtown, I'm going over there next. I may take some pictures of what we were looking at yesterday at high tide too. Actually, it's not high tide, it's another two hours to come. These are the brants. You can see those. Really pretty birds, about the size of a duck. They look like a goose though with a uh, ring around them. They're actually a geese. A couple of swans just flew in. You can see a white speck in the middle of the pair. You see another one that's about halfway over to the miles Let me uh, see if how well this camera goes. the Ospreys here blue is in that nest up there, see the wings fly. This camera's really not good. Just flew off. Might have found a fish. Oh, there he comes. Just came out of the water. It's the best shot because I was looking through the camera. It just flew into the nest with the fish. Flew around. We're out on the pier now. That was the beach we just came from. Take a shot from where I'm standing. There's that pirate ship. It has a water in the back. There's the Captain John's and the usual stuff out in the bay. Actually, the harbor. It's the big long spit beach. The point. The sea is very different. As I said, my family used to vacation down around here, a few miles south. We lived about 30 miles north of here in Quincy. And there are some faces that I know. I just saw some over there at the parking lot. And then uh, we got the jetty. Thought I'd show you this at high tide. It's a different site. I'll show you the other side of the uh, northern side of the uh, pier with the Mayflower. Usually is all we have now is that boat. The Mayflower is in dry dock somewhere. They said it was in Mystic. We're just over there in the park. Beyond that, the other park is on the other jetty. High tide is a See that sandy spit out there? Big Long Beach. I don't know if there's a road there or not. I think there is. And there's Indian Points. Beautiful, you can see it. Latest day here. And Old Marina. Right over by the rock, which is right over there. The tour of Plymouth would be complete without looking at a statue of that great hero, uh, William Bradford, the first governor and writer of the Mayflower Compact. It didn't last too long. 
Let me show you what it says on the side here. It couldn't spell either back in those days. I had a lot of arguments about how to spell stuff. There we go. And if you look at the uh, seventh line down, you know, you'll get a sense of some things about the English language that annoyed me since I really got into linguistics. But they argued about the spelling and everything. Personally, if you look, you'll see on a hill there's the statue of the Indian and he's right across from Bradford. He must be cursed to have to have that thing in front of him. I speak like an Indian, you know. Standing at the building of the rock, I'm looking up at the Indian. When we were kids, this was about the most exciting thing to do on a rainy day. They had to go to the A&P well, the building's there, but it's got all different stores in there. He's been out of business for a long time. But this is the rock. It sits inside this little crib that goes into the sea. gift shops behind me. You can see the sign over there about where we are. Hang on a second. And here we are at the uh, Pilgrim statue. I don't know who that is. Probably from so old. It's usually the only one anyone can remember. A list of all the passengers on the ship, if I remember right, on the back of the marker here. In a little park. Right across from the rock on the other side from where Brad yeah, here we go, here are the list of names. I'm not gonna read them. It's... So somebody didn't have a first name. Whatever this the Tigre and Chance group. Anyways. The rock you can see is right over there. Bradford's just around the bend. Uh, Bradford, by the way, is somebody I uh, used to not refer to without the word worm in front of Bradford. That worm bread. And I realize that Indian spiritual sensibilities are all illegal to have, but I kind of remember being at the first Thanksgiving. It took me a long time to remember it. Well, I'll tell you, I think the reason that we make that concept of our sensibilities crazy so that we can have these idiots drive around red pickup trucks, pretend to have jobs, and do their things that they've been doing while we've been studying them over here. I'm not sure what we're going to do with this place. I'm back at the cemetery. There's really little to do around here. As you can see, they're talking about how great the cannons were, fighting the Narragansetts, which is a local Indian tribe, mostly from Rhode Island. And those are the ones that handed Roger Williams all that land, according to Roger Williams and the phony contracts that were or treaties allegedly signed uh, with Williams. Anyway, I, the, the thing I want to point out here is that I don't understand why cannons were so important against Indians. Well, what are cannons going to do against Indians? Think about it. This raises a point about the creation of stories. we got these heroes with cannons. Why were they heroes with cannons? I don't know. Put that in the tickler file. We'll take a look at it someday. Here's another one. There was a fort built here. I guess the stones are used in the church there. It's right over there. The fort was built in 1675, right kind of at the beginning middle of Medicom's alleged war. It was the war that the residents of Plymouth then trumped up against Medicom for you know, imaginary things that were done or real things that they did blame Medicom for. 
any uh, local Indians for. What is curious about this is again we're looking at the notion of what is it about forts that Indians couldn't walk around and laugh around, which is exactly what was done. Indians' idea of fighting the worthless Englishmen as they looked at them was to walk around the forts, battle around them if they were near the water, and laugh, and then go have lunch. I point this out because there may be some keys here to understanding what it is we're in the middle of now. Cannons and forts. It had nothing to do with fighting any Indians. You know, they don't. They say don't speak ill of the dead, but I'm an exorcist, and if I'm going to talk about that worm, do I get to make the comment that that worm might now have worms?